everybody. My name is Kenna McKee and I'm here to do today's devotion with you. So I'm going to be in Proverbs 7, 1, 3, 1 through 3. It's um, a verse. We all have so many verses that mean so much to us. And when they first asked us to do devos, this one kind of popped up, but I didn't wasn't sure how to to enter it in or but God always his time's always perfect. So today is uh, June 15th, so yesterday was June 14th, Pastor Gary taught us on Sunday, so I'm not sure when this will air, but I'm kind of going off of what he was teaching, and that's as we've been in 1 John, it's just about the commandment to love one another, and God's commandments, and he just tells us to love, or what he when he instructs us to do something, it's for our protection, it's because he loves us, and he cares about us, and he wants us to do what's right and so um i love and pastor gary he said on sunday that god initiates love and then we respond and also god's love isn't burdensome it shouldn't be a burden to keep god's commandments to do what he says we should be doing it in response to his genuine love for us and so i know a lot of people kind of get like oh the law or the commandments and but I just see it as, it's his law. It's God's way of our, as being our heavenly father to say, I want, I need you to follow these things because I love you and I want to protect you and I want to keep you safe away from harm, you know, and because there's a lot of situations that we can put ourselves in that are harmful and, uh, and the 10 commandments speaks of a lot of them. We can put a lot of things before God. And then I notice when I have, um, when I start to put things above God, I notice I get really weary or doubtful. And so it's just, it's best to listen to him. So um, I'm going to go ahead and read. Or first, I'm going to pray. That was in an email to pray. So um, Gage might be sweetly reminding me to not forget to do that. So thanks, Gage. Um, all right. Father, we just come before you, Lord. And I thank you so much for the love that you have for us. Father, open up our hearts to your word and help us to just desire to obey you and be obedient to your word, Lord, because your ways are so much better than ours and um, you just love us so much, Lord, and I thank you for that and I just ask that you would be with us this morning in your most precious name, amen. Alrighty, so Proverbs 7, uh, 1 through 3. My son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live. And my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. To keep his commandments to, just like on Sunday mornings, we're, learning, we're going through John, just loving one another. Sometimes it is, it's really hard to love one another. And I know there's some people who have just been hurt. And it's like, well, I've, I just get hurt by people, so... I don't, it's hard for me to trust, you know. Well, we're not doing it to serve others. We're doing it because God tells us to love and to forgive. Um, you know, and then as far as I think that this in, in Proverbs 7, it's talking about, you know, um, as you read on the crafty harlot and staying away from things that entice you or will take you down the wrong path, which I think is pretty safe to line up with, um, our own desires. Sometimes we get caught up in things that, that aren't edifying for us. And that's, I think, why the Ten Commandments are there, or the law, or just what God wants to protect us from. I think of um, whether you're a parent or not, or just, you know, if, if we're, you're in a group of people and there's a, a little kid about to run into the street, you're not going to say, oh yeah, go ahead, it's fun out in the middle of the street. No, you care. You don't want that little kid to get hurt. And it's like, stop, look both ways. That's why we teach certain Things And that's just God's reason to put these things on our heart, put his word in our heart so that we can serve him and, and just live an obedient life towards him. And, um, I love the, um, the analogy, keep my law as the apple of your eye. The de definition of apple of the eye is figuratively, it is something or someone cherished above others. We can cherish who our Savior is above anything else, and we can keep his word 
because he's not a liar. He's not going to steer us down the wrong path. He's, he's setting these things and telling us what to do because he loves us and he wants to protect us. And like Pastor Gary said, we should willingly want to do that because it's, um, it's a response from us to his love. And I just, I, I, I just love these couple of verses. And um, I know sometimes people kind of get mixed up. Oh, well, God tempted me in a couple of the commentaries I listened to going through this. It was um, reminding us that God does not really tempt us. In James 1, 13 through 15, I'm going to read, it's our evil hearts that are our own evil desires that um, kind of draw us away. So uh, James 1, 13 through 15. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then when desire has conceived it, gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. That's who our Savior is. He wants to protect us because he knows that we initially have that evil heart. And, um, and I like, just like um, Reynara's Ray's devotion, she was talking about when us as earthly parents or earthly people give good gifts to those that we love, how much better are those gifts going to be from our Heavenly Father who has no evil within him? You know, so we can just trust the things that he's wanting to protect us from. And don't get it mixed up of what your evil heart is wanting and what God is tempting us with. Because that's just like it says, God is, I am not tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. And so I just, I just wanted to remind everybody and just encourage us that our obedience to him is a response to his love for us and to remember that these guidelines we shouldn't be so oh well i can get so close to walking that line of obedience and disobedience we should want to be far from it because god's main purpose is to protect us not to just give us all these rules because he's this mean hateful father that wants to keep us from having fun no when you can truly yield to his word through obedience there's just such freedom there and so again I just want to read those couple verses and then I'll close in prayer just to remind us that it's his word and as I was in prayer with a, a friend and I was kind of going over the idea of what I wanted today's devotion to be about she was just um her sweetheart was saying that she was already feeling convicted because how much you know, secular songs she has written on the tab tablet of her heart or how many, you know, lines from movies, from secular movies, but how hard it is for us to remember God's word, but how easy it is for us to remember things that aren't of him. You know, I know a lot of songs I could probably just sing off the top of my head that aren't of God, but then you think of a verse and I'm like, oh yeah, where is that? I can, you know, I can just type it into Google and it'll kind of pop up a couple verses for me. And so it's just just that reminder of where we should be and just how faithful God is. So again, Proverbs 7, 1 through 3. My son, keep my words and treasure my commands within you. Keep my commands and live and my law as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. All right, brothers and sisters. Well, thank you for being with, this, being with me this morning. And um, let's go ahead and close in prayer. Lord, again, we just, we thank you that you love us so much, that you desire to protect us, Father, and Lord, even when hard things come or bad things come, Lord, you say that you work all things out for good for those who love you, and Lord, I just, I thank you again that we can trust you, we can trust who you are, we can trust what you're doing in our lives in the good seasons and the bad seasons, Lord, because you are faithful. And we just love you and thank you. In your most precious name, amen.